I am here today with Laywin Pham and Shannon Hale, and we're going to talk about friendship and what it takes to be friends forever. Ladies, how does that happen? Lay Wynn, how do you get to be friends forever? First, you got to find the kindred spirit. <laughs> um, I don't think it happens to everyone, actually. I think it's it's really tough to be able to find that, that person who you just have that connection with. And um, message to all you kids out there, it doesn't always happen in middle school. It doesn't always happen, unfortunately, in grade school. Sometimes it happens a little later in life. Um, mm. But gosh, you find someone who you're not afraid to be around, you're not afraid to be honest with, and, you know, you can sort of spill your guts out and the person's not going to reject you. <laughs> yeah, it's about acceptance for who you are, right? Yeah, and, you know, we complement each other really well, so. <laughs> well, well, speaking of that, Shannon, how do you describe your working relationship? It is like magical is the word I would use. It is uncanny. It's strange. So we've, we've, we've actually done a lot of books. We've done about 15 books together of different mm -hmm. types, but these ones, uh, Friends Forever and the other two in the series, these are graphic novel memoirs. So these are stories, real stories about me. And to find someone who can draw you and your childhood and like open the head. It was so crazy. Like even in the script, I tried not to describe people too closely because I didn't want, I changed their names and I didn't want people to know who they were in case they thought I got them wrong. But somehow she drew them exactly how they look. So everybody's going to know who they are. <laughs> she crawled into my brain and yeah. looked at my memories oh, and no. drew them. It's just, it's just that's Andrew's spirit thing. <laughs> Lewin, you said that when it comes to writing books, you and Shannon seem to share a brain. Was the communication between you, both of you, really that easy? Yeah. Gosh, I hate to say that because it makes it sound like it was no work at all. It was a lot of work, but um, I think there's something to it when, when you're not afraid to tell the other person how you feel about something, how something um, that's being interpreted might not work or how it's working great. Um, we could always be honest with each yeah. other. That's, I think, was the most important part is that we could always sort of tell each other what was working, what wasn't working, and what felt right to us. There's never a moment where we had to be like, ooh, I don't really like what she's doing, but I don't want to make her feel bad. Yeah. First of all, we loved what the other one was doing so much, so <laughs> sincerely, that it's very easy. When you know someone loves you and sees you and appreciates you, it's very easy to then say, but this one thing isn't working without it, you know. Without yeah. them being, without our defenses coming up or something. And as the illustrator, I sort of get the last imprint on everything. And so I got to be very careful with how I got to stage the scene so that Shannon could be seen in a certain way. And one of the most important parts about a graphic novel, I don't think people realize is how you create the empathy between the characters when you're looking at the page. It's not just drawing a square and then drawing a face on the inside. It's where do you place that person inside the box? How do you make that person feel sad at a moment or angry at a moment without even having to see the person's face? So there's a lot that I'm trying to communicate and I'm sort of protecting the little Shannon in the book because I'm so aware of who the Shannon is in real life. In fact, there were probably a couple of times where Shannon had to call me on that and say, when you're you, like you've got to show my face yeah. you've got to show me and this one moment where i was like <laughs> this is she's not pretty in this moment i i was going through a lot ugly and it was not cry a great moment. like you can't protect me we just need to see it all in all its ugliness <laughs> yeah and i had to do it you know? <laughs> how do you do that <laughs> this is going to be very interesting when you start talking about best friends and friends forever now imagine this kids from different areas of a metropolitan area are brought together to sing in a choir in the fifth grade. In fifth grade, how old are you in fifth grade? What are you, nine, 10, 11 years old in fifth grade? Here we all are 68 years old, Artie, Wendell, Gary, James, and Iris. And we are best friends. So I'm still trying to understand, we can't remember where we met each other at to be best friends. Do you see yourself, Luann and Shannon, being friends for 50 and 60 years. I do. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I really, yeah. The last book in this series would be called Old Friends. <laughs> <laughs> Extremely old friends. Extremely old friends, yeah. No, absolutely. You know, when you're younger, your, your, your world is so small and you really only get to know people who live next door or whatever, whoever happens to be in your class. But as your world opens up, you can really find your true real friends, the people 
who get you and have your same interests. And I think that's when you can really find your forever friends. Yeah, I think the, the book is great for that because it does talk about the eighth grade year. And your eighth grade year is really where you discover who you are as a person. And it's, it's where you start coming into yourself. And the friends that you're likely to find that age, just like the ones that you're talking about, um, you share something more than just the fact that you live next door with them. You, you share common interests and likes and you're growing to be a person together. And uh, that's where the friends forever comes from. And it's why it's difficult in the story because Shannon goes through all these difficult times with her depression and anxiety. And sometimes her friends have a little bit of difficult time understanding. You know, and this is a time when we all need our friends forever, especially during pandemic and everything that's going on around us. It is really interesting. Shannon, <laughs> you're right. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us on Morning Blend and talking about your third book, Friends Forever. I'm going to read that. I, I'm going to read that and compare it to my friends. And we've known each other pretty close to 60 years now. Wow, that's awesome. <laughs> that's a good amount of time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies, thank you again. Thank, thank you so much. much. Bye, James. Bye. Bye-bye.